Hi, this is Mark Laughlin speaking for the Ambidextral Gunfighter. Today I'm out here going to zero uh, an optic for my Springfield Armory Hellion. We've mounted a Leupold VX Freedom with a Pigplex reticle. And I want to thank Leupold for sending me this optic to do the review and testing with. Now the reason we chose the Pigplex is uh, because the reticle really kind of matches up really well with the fact that this optic sits pretty high above the bore. The uh, Springfield Armory, the, the center of your sight with it mounted low like this is still 3.65 inches above the bore. So it's kind of high. Um, so anyway, the, the reticle has a, a circle the crosshairs circling the crosshairs and it's a 4.5 mm of angle uh, radius I guess you'd say on that circle and um, so the my goal is to have uh, the zero at the crosshairs to be at uh, about uh, 37 and 360 yards uh, we'll have a hold under at the top of the circle for about uh, 75 to 175 yards and then a hold over at the bottom of the circle will work out at about 500 yards we then have the stadia line down here that's uh, uh, 8.6 minute of angle below the crosshairs so that will should work out to about 600 yards we have another stadia line at 12.6 minute of angle below the crosshairs and that should work out at 700 yards and then finally the tip of the the duplex part of the reticle is 17.3 minute of angle below the crosshairs and that would work out to 800 yards uh, with a four power optic or four and a half power optic that's uh, probably kind of uh, pushing the limits of it I'm thinking that for general use the you know max is probably five or six hundred yards uh, with this optic now the way the now we've got of course this optic and we've got a a running a um, uh, 68 grain uh, Hornady Frontier which has a ballistic coefficient of 3.355 and I uh, set up using the Hornady ballistics calculator and at 5,000 feet here in Wyoming and what I come up with and this is a starting point <laughs> is to zero this at 37 yards that gets me a distant zero of about uh, 300, 360 yards down in here and then what I will have here is that the up to about 75 yards it will shoot dead on from 75 to 200 you will be using that the top of that circle and then from 475 to 525 you will be using the bottom of the circle and then as we get to let's see let me switch here to the trajectory sheet here we show uh, the near zero from about uh, zero to 75 yards, pretty much hold dead on. Uh, we'll hold under from 75 to about 200 yards. Uh, our distant zero is gonna be from about a little past 300 to about three, 380 maybe, 375. And then our hold under ring here is at the far end of this trajectory from about uh, 475 to 525. Now the reason I'm running this this arc rather than just having the zero be at like the apogee uh, is that I want to have this maximum point blank range for a 16 inch target that gets me where their apogee here is about eight inches high and then over here at about eight inches low that gets me a maximum point blank range of 425 yards meaning that on a 16 inch you know vertical target I can shoot dead on and hit some part of that target without even doing any of these hold unders or hold overs and then also to note here is uh, we've got this other trajectory chart here uh, extending out to 800 this top one here I'm going to extend to 600 because to me that's the 
uh, the more uh, realistic ranges but we do have here the 600 we're using that uh, what I call the the female symbol we're using that first stadia line and then at 700 we're using the second stadia line and then at 800 we're using the tip of that uh, duplex part uh, post of the reticle what I've done so far I've zeroed at 37 yards I've done that actually at the 25 yard range and so if I look here at my ballistic calculator Later, I should be 1.1 inches low uh, at at uh, seven at, at at 25 yards, and that's a zero. It's 37 yards. So today I'm going to check my zero at 100 and 200 yards. And what I'll be looking for is at 100 yards, I expect it to be 4.7 inches high from point of aim to point of impact, and at 200 yards, uh, almost. 7.9 or almost 8 inches high from point of aim to point of impact and for all of these remember that circle had a 4.5 uh, MOA a distance from the center of the reticle uh, so that you see here the minute of angle from about 75 to 200 varies from 3.9 4.5 4.6 4.4 4.2 4.4, 3.8 so all of those I'm pretty much figuring I will use good enough using the top of that circle for my hold at those ranges now to reiterate uh, the reason I chose the uh, Pigplex reticle from Loophold was for this Pigplex reticle for that hold under. Um, they graciously offered to send me one of their more higher end optics like the uh, I think it was the VX3 HD or one of the others even one with the lighted reticle and um, uh, th they had uh, they just uh, didn't quite get my interest and so I actually went with the cheaper one. Um, and so I could have this pigplex reticle with the hold under and hold over on that circle. Now, the one of the things I've run into, uh, I've mounted this as low as I can get it. It's just barely clearing the rail. It's using uh, uh, these are uh, Monstrum low rings, and I would get the same result using the Leopold uh, medium rings. It would put it right down here next to the rail, and that actually, quite interestingly, puts it. To where it co-witnesses almost exactly with the iron sights and uh, so you figure your cheek if the cheek weld is right for the iron sights it's going to be perfect which it is for the optic mounted that low another reason i like the optic to be mounted low is that because this rifle already ha has a problem a little bit of a problem issue with being top heavy just kind of a nature of bull pups in general but uh, it's a little bit top heavy you're, and you've got a lot of height over the bore so it's got you know you put weight up here and that's more leverage and this optic is at 9.6 ounces is the lighter of the Leupold offerings and it's very close to one of our all-time favorite uh, optics which is the old Weaver V3 which is a one to three power optic but uh, this has just uh, got some phenomenal glass for the price of this optic and um, anyway I'll be doing a review later on the optic itself but uh, one thing I've run into is that uh, with the Hellion is that this tends to tap me right in the orbital of my eye and so you'll often see me uh, running the iron sight up with the even though I'm shooting through the optic but because it's co-witnessing so well I can actually look right through there and look at the optic and presumably that would even help you know if I was working out to some really far ranges beyond the parallax uh, focus of this optic if I went beyond uh, like if it was 150 yards if I went to say 300 yards or 400 yards I might want to use this iron sight just to help you know a uh, avoid any parallax issues Anyway, so let's proceed. I'm going to do some testing at uh, 100, 200 yards, and we'll go from there. It turned out that the 50-yard range was unoccupied, so I dropped in to verify the trajectory there first. Notice that I never, or almost never, shoot from the bench. I prefer to zero for the combination of rifle and me. I was expecting point of impact to be about 1.1 inches above point of aim. Here, with my sub 4 MOA group, it looks like I'm a bit low for my calculated trajectory. Off to the 100 yard range. 
With bullpups, I use my elbows splayed out a bit like a bipod. I found that I'm almost as accurate doing this as I am with an AR-15 using a loop sling. I haven't yet figured out a way to use a sling as a shooter's aid on bullpups. At 100 yards, I was expecting the point of impact to be 4.7 inches above point of aim. Here, my sub 4 MOA group was at best 3 inches high. Noting that my groups were a bit off to the left, I made a quick windage adjustment and moved on to the 200 yard range. At this range, I could barely make out the diamond center of the target. I should have made sure the target was centered in the target backer, since I think I might have tended to bracket the white backer in my reticle. Once I got my natural point of aim, I tried to rely upon my breathing cycle cadence to get a decent group. The short bullpup rifle does seem to do a good job of coming out of recoil and back onto the target. At 200 yards, I was looking for 7.9 inches impact above point of aim. My sub 4 MOA group was about 6 inches high, so only 1.9 inches off of calculated values, and certainly well within the variance of my shooting skills. Eventually, I need to get out to the ambidextral proving grounds to check the trajectory at 300, 400, and 500 yards. The goal being a battle site zero with an MPBR, that's maximum point blank range, not the Milwaukee brew, though that's coming later, an MPBR of 425 yards with intermediate range hold unders of about 4.5 MOA. I want an optic that can sit low enough to have the same cheek weld as the excellent Hellion iron sights and low to reduce the amount of leverage that the optic has in making the rifle feel top heavy. The lightweight loopholed VX Freedom Pigplex reticle does a good job of meeting those requirements. A rifle and sighting system that is effective at high speed CQB ranges yet with the barrel length and enough glass to reach out to 500 and maybe 600 yards and harass out to 800 yards. It's Mark Laughlin speaking for the Ambidextral Gunfighter. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Please check out the links. I've got a link down in the description to the uh, Springfield Armory Hellion page. And uh, definitely check that out. We keep updating that even faster than I actually get videos out on different topics. So I think you might get some advance notice of what I'm going to be covering on the channel.